<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and right here we are looking at the PSP yet again because there has been a new development here. And keep in mind, it is a work in progress, but I wanted to show you all this because I do think it's pretty cool. And there's been a nice upgrade to the Arc 4 custom firmware that supports it natively and really just directly in the firmware itself. This here is my PSP Go, but this will work on any model of the PSP. And this will show you all how you can get onto hopefully a more modern Wi Fi connection using the plugin WPA2 PSP. Now over on the ARC4 GitHub repository, it does state here, at this point some of you may already have heard about the WPA2 PSP plugin that was released a week ago. The developer of the plugin known as Moment in the Discord server was incredibly kind to share with us the source code, so we've been able to incorporate it into the custom firmware as a setting. Now the thing with the PSP is that it does have Wi-Fi capabilities, and it's something that I made a lot of use of growing up. However, before this, I probably didn't connect onto Wi-Fi network on a PSP for about 15 years, but thanks to this plugin, we were able to get that to work. Now do keep in mind, this is going to be a work in progress, it still does have work on it, but even when it is improved further, there are going to be limitations of the PSP itself that we just won't be able to get past. So if you think you're just going to be able to connect to every single network effortlessly, get onto every single website, uh, it does make accessibility better, but it's certainly not going to be perfect, and that is, again, a limitation of still being in progress, but also the PSP hardware itself, since these are older systems. However, we are still able to bring back functionality and even increase functionality on the system thanks to custom firmware, which is something I absolutely love about the community with any type of modding community, but especially the PSP. So if you're wanting to follow along on this, you are going to need a few things. You're of course going to need your PSP. It could be a 1000, 2000, 3000 street or a go. Any model is going to do. You're also going to need the ARC4 custom firmware installed if you're going to be following along with this implementation. Now, I do have a few videos on this which I've made already, and they'll be linked down below in the description. So first of all, if you have a PSP which has not been modified in any way, shape, or form, and you are needing custom firmware on it, I'll have one video showing how you can mod your PSP from start to finish if it's on a stock firmware and get to a custom firmware with ARC4 in the end. Alternatively, if you have a PSP, for example, let's say a few months or a few years ago, you end up modding it with a custom firmware, it could have been Pro-C, LME, ME, Infinity 1 or 2, uh, whatever you were setting up on there. If you have a PSP that's already been modded and you want to get it up to ARC4, I have a video covering modded PSPs and upgrading them to ARC4, so that should hopefully help out. And finally, let's say you installed ARC4, but you are needing to update to the latest version. I have a separate video covering that, but I'm actually going to cover that super quick on here because it's quite an easy process to update your ARC4 custom firmware. So again, if you need to mod your system from scratch or you need to upgrade your system from an older custom firmware setup, the videos will be linked down below in the description. If you're already running ARC4, go ahead, grab a USB cable or however you're going to hook up up your storage to your computer, and let's get set up on that. This will all be linked down below in the description, but you're going to need to go to the ARC4 GitHub repository, and over here, you're going to need to come to releases. Now, by the time you're watching this, this will probably be a higher revision, but you need to be on, at minimum, revision 161, because 161 is the first revision to end up implementing this. So as long as you're on revision 161 or higher, you should be good. Once you're over at the download for this, you just need to download the ARC4 zip file somewhere you can easily find it. Once you have the zip file downloaded, you just need to right click and extract it into its own ARC4 folder. Now go ahead, open up the ARC4 folder, and you should find an update folder right here. You just need to right click and copy out this update folder, then go over to wherever your PSP storage is hooked up, mine is the I drive, go to the PSP folder, game folder, and inside of here, you'll need to paste in that update folder. Now if you already have an update folder, Folder in here, you are going to have to remove that, but you need to make sure that your update folder has been copied over. Once it's been copied over, you can right click, eject this, and let's move back over to the PSP. The rest of the magic is going to be on there. Once your file copy has completed, go ahead and go back to your PSP. Navigate over to the game column, go into your system storage or your memory stick wherever you copied it over, and you should find an ARC4 updater. All you need to do is fire this up and give it a few moments to update. I almost think I can see their hopes and dreams flickering in each little light. And there we go. Once it's updated, after that, it should soft reboot. It should bring you back over to, well, the XMB here once that's done. 
And the nice thing is that update is also self-destructing, so the file should be gone at this point. We can check here, and yep, it's no longer there. Now, if you hit the select button right here, you should be able to see that your revision number has changed from what it was before. So I'm now running revision 161. Now, the nice thing is here, you just need to go back, go back here. Now, navigate over to the extras column. And if you're using a PSP street, you're going to have to go over to the game column, and you're going to have to navigate up. But you need to look for the custom firmware settings right here. Once you go into the custom firmware settings, you need to navigate down and you should have a new option there called WPA2. You're going to want to go in here and turn that on. And once that's on, one thing that does help out is fully rebooting the system, just from what I've noticed. So I'm just going to come over here, I'm going to shut down the system itself, and once it's turned off, go ahead and turn it back on with that WPA2 setting enabled, and you should now have the ability to hopefully connect to a WPA2 network. And we're going to test that real quick. So I fired up a hotspot real quick, but I'm going to come over here, go down to settings, and all the way down at the bottom, there's going to be network settings. Now I need to navigate in here, go down to infrastructure mode, and here you need to create a new connection. Go in here, scan, and check this out. Well, you know what? This would do it as well too. If you get a message like this, make sure you actually enable your WLAN right here. So you're going to need to find your switch, turn that on, Go back and now you're going to need to scan yet again and here we go check it out it was able to find a couple of networks here so this is the one that i'm going to be connecting to which is proxy you can go ahead load that in navigate over now right here when it's looking for a wlan security setting as you can see there's no wpa2 so you're just going to have to really stick with the one that it's selecting here but navigate over and here you need to enter in your wi-fi password so go ahead and do that once you've successfully punched that in navigate over easy is fine unless you want to do custom in which you want to like set an IP address and such but I'm just going to go ahead go with easy on this connection name is fine and at this point we can go ahead and save our settings and that's going to be about it now you could run a test connection on here and let's just see if it works but I'm going to be honest if it fails out I'm not going to be all too surprised so it was able to connect it's trying to get the IP address and let's see what happens here testing internet connection it might fail out at this step and that's okay. You know what? That actually surprises me. It was able to do a successful connection on here, so that's good. On one of my systems, it didn't, but then again, I had to reboot it in order for it to work, so we did get that sorted out. Now let's go ahead and close out of here. Now that you have that saved, if you want to give this a spin here, we're just going to do a really basic test by using the internet browser. Now you can go over to the internet browser itself, and one of these settings that I do recommend changing right off the bat is going to be down here. Navigate over to Tools, go into these settings, and once you're in here, go to View Settings, and once you're over here, you can go to the Conserve Memory option, and it would be recommended to turn that on for your browsing. Now once that's all done, we can come up here to the address bar, and it is kind of a pain to type in addresses here, but let's try Try a couple of sites. So here's one that we're going to try out, which is neverssl.com, which is a good testing site and it doesn't have SSL as it states here. We can go ahead and hit start, hit start yet again. Here we're going to need to pick our Wi Fi network, let it connect, do its thing here. It got the IP address. And here we go, it is connecting, and would you look at that, there was no extra magic done outside of enabling that plugin, but as you can see right here, I guess I'll have to press circle on here, and here we go, then I can actually scroll down and such and look at this. Alright, it's been, you all, it, it, it's been at least a decade since I've used this browser, so if I'm new to this, that's why. I'm trying to kind of relearn this here, so to speak. But as you can see, that was one website which is loading up just fine on the internet. Uh, I could even try a secure one as well, too. So for this, I'm going to hit triangle, go up here, we're going to delete all of this, and we're going to try example.com. These sound like joke sites, but no, these are great for testing. So here we go, here's the second one, we'll try example.com, let's go ahead and fire it up. And as you can see, you are able to navigate this, so that's great. Now everything looks well and good here, aside from, you know, obviously these not being designed for a screen this small. However, I do want to say it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. We can try any other website, and I'm going to say that most websites are not going to work on this device. So here, if we want to try something more text-based, we can go to Reddit, give that a shot here, and it is asking us if we want to move from an unencrypted page to an encrypted page, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. 
give it a few moments and here we go we do get a handshake error on this which unfortunately this is just what's going to happen when you're trying to go on newer websites and modern websites using such a old device and especially an older browser like this so that's why i'm saying it's not going to fully open up everything but we at least have more connectivity than we did before which is always great to see especially when we added in with plugins and custom firmware now i do want to mention something for the local ip address here and you can see i did an easy connection however it has has been recommended if you're running into some issues you might want to set a static IP on your network for your PSP specifically as opposed to using a dynamic connection like what I did now if what I'm talking about sounds like mumbo jumbo I'm not gonna be explaining it fully in here and there's a lot of networking references you can check out but if you're wanting to get into your router and set that on your router itself I would recommend this site port forward and just as an example here I'd be a little bit surprised if people watching are using this one here but like a great router for for the time at least, WRT54G. Here you could look up your router, you'd be able to do a search here, and then you can find your port forwarding options and such, but it's not necessarily going to be this that you're doing port forwarding on, it's more you're going to be coming over here, and this will help you at least get into your router, so it'll show you all the instructions, the default login and such where you can get in there, and from here you can go into your network settings and you'll be able to pick a device such as your PSP and assign it a static IP as opposed to a dynamic IP address and it has been recommended to do it from the router itself as opposed to doing it on the console. You could do it on both technically but if you're going to be choosing one it's better to do it on the router so that way every time your PSP connects to your router it will be able to find and obtain and keep that IP address singled out for it. So there we go that's it as you could see within a few minutes time I was able to successfully reconnect my PSP onto a network here and actually get this PSP onto my network for the first time ever. It's actually never connected to the networks here so that's pretty cool but either way that is about it for this video here hopefully you were able to get your arc 4 firmware installed or updated hopefully you were able to then go over to your custom firmware settings and actually make use of that wpa2 plugin seriously a big thank you and shout out goes out to moment from their discord server for coding and releasing this wpa2 psp plugin and of course sharing the source code over to the arc 4 development team and since we're doing this all on arc 4 a big shout out and thank you to the developers behind Arc4 for maintaining this and implementing this into the firmware itself. Either way, that is about it for this video here, so we'll go ahead and close up the PSP, put it to the side, and as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. But enjoy getting your PSP back onto your network.